On the island of Newfoundland Upon the Selwyn's coast Lies the little town of Virgil To whom all things this told There are so many islands That lie just off her shores And when the cold north wind blows You can hear the billows roar The people from the village Make their living from the sea They like their independence it shows that they are free Some fish in their small boats In the wind, the rain and sleep While others make their living on the offshore called their fleet If known to share a tragedy Down When the memories overcome, they show their grief with tears. For they have lost some loved ones to the furies of the sea. For heartaches and heartbreaks are locked in memory. This village. It's got beauty Carved on its rugged shore Seven miles of pure white sand Who could ask for more? The mountains and the valleys Where the rivers run so fast And the salmon rise to the sportsman's fly As he makes Another cast. Tell the people of this village, love their native home. For anyone who goes away, oh, surely will return. Just like that life. Rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul. What makes this rugged bellies burn so deeply in your soul? Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight in our stories, we have Anglican Church Congregational Meeting. Art Alfie Lifestyle Clinic, Fire Department Demonstrations, Town Council Report. Please stay tuned for these stories after this. Try Your Luck and Play TV Bingo on Wednesday, sponsored by the Lions Club. Cards are 6 for $5 and can be bought from any Lions member or in most stores around town. A congregational meeting was held at the Anglican Church on Wednesday. This meeting was to discuss the financial situation that the parish now finds itself in. The meeting was held at the church and led by Reverend Bellis. He has stated how the income from envelope givings is not enough to meet the monthly expenses of the parish. Most people were under the impression that the parish hall was going to be sold to cut costs. Reverend Bellis was looking for ways to cut costs, raise more money, but selling the parish hall would be the last resort. It was the general consensus at the meeting that the congregation did not want to see the parish all sold and other ways must be found to cut costs and raise money. The vestry, which is the governing body of the church, will now discuss other options at making everything more cost efficient. The Art Alfie Lifestyle Clinic was held on Wednesday, October 15th. Approximately 141 people went through where you could get your weight and height measured, blood pressure taken, 
and blood glucose levels measured. At the end of the day, prizes were drawn. This was done at the Public Health Nurse Clinic and was run by the Public Health Nurse and her volunteers. During the week, the fire department hosted demonstrations for students of Burgio Academy. These demonstrations were hosted by firefighter Levi Rose and firefighter Ross Ann. During these demonstrations, the students learned the classes of fire, A being paper of wood, B being petroleum based, and C electrical, and what to use to put them out. They also learned how to use fire extinguishers. For this exercise, they went outside and made a fire where students had turns using the extinguishers to put them out. The fire department also demonstrated the emergency number to call in case of fires and how these calls reach the pagers. A fat fire demonstration was also done to show what can happen when cooking oil is used in improper cooking equipment and left unattended. <laughs> it's very important that you have a smoke detector installed in your home and that they are working properly. You should also have a fire extinguisher in your home and fully charged. You should shake your extinguisher about every six months to make sure the chemicals are not settled. Do not discharge your extinguisher to test it because once you do that, it will, no lo it will not last much longer. The students were also shown some of the equipment that the firefighters used in case of emergencies. Mayor George Reed came by the studio with his town council uh, good report. Good evening. Uh, we had a, a council meeting uh, Wednesday night, October the fifteenth, uh, and I'll give you uh, a rundown on uh, what uh, took place at council meeting. On uh, October the 9th to the 12th, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Dave McDonald and myself attended the Municipal Convention in, uh, in Cornerbrook. We attended uh, various uh, sessions in there, uh, dealing with a uh, number of uh, issues, of course. And, uh, but the main thing that we were interested in was uh, getting a meeting with uh, uh, Minister Denine. And uh, on Friday afternoon, uh, Dave and I met with uh, the deputy minister and the assistant deputy minister and Minister uh, Dave Denine concerning our water project. Now that water project, of course, uh, you know, I've told you before, I'll tell you before, it, it came in approximately 900 and thirty thousand dollars over the estimate cost of it. They managed to get it down now to five hundred, around five hundred and thousand over the estimate cost, and now they're trying to 
get priced out the material that they're going to take out and the material that's going to be used from the oil plant, trying to get that priced out so that they can get the actual contract, what it's going to be. There's been negotiations going on between the engineers, the contractors, and of course, government. We've probably reached the stage that of our input, I don't think we can have any more of input into this. They basically told us so, that uh, they are now crunching the numbers and I guess trying to get the contractor come on side. They expect to have a decision made within two weeks on whether or not the contract is going ahead or what other alternative that we might have. Basically, there's no sense speculating at this point, and I might as well have to wait for about another week to two to get a firm answer and the recommendations from government of what their decision is. I know it's been a long, drawn up process, and uh, nobody's been any more disappointed than your council in relationship to this uh, water project. Absolutely uh, murderous trying to, uh, trying to get this thing going. It looks like whatever the decision is that nothing will be done uh, in 2008. But if the contracts can get awarded, of course, the equipment can be hoarded and and work can commence uh, first of the new year, but uh, all of that right now is just uh, pure speculation. Had the meeting also was uh, Fire Chief Glenn Ann, and uh, uh, Mr. Han came in to uh, talk about the, uh, the fire department and uh, and probably uh, the public's conception of the uh, of, of the. Uh, fire department, what they should be doing and uh, and what they are doing and what they're capable of doing. And uh, I think uh, everybody in Virgil, including your council, feel that we have one of the best volunteer fire departments on this island if not the best. I've always felt so, and I continue to say that, that it is so. So we don't have all the equipment that's probably necessary to do some jobs, but we they are well equipped. And I don't think you'll find a better group of volunteers anywhere. So regardless of uh, slight criticisms and that that they might get, of course, uh, they have full support of council in relationship to uh, the type of uh, volunteer for a uh, fire uh, brigade that we got here. It's, it's an excellent one. So we're very proud of them. Also at, at the meeting was uh, Constable John Butler from the RCMP. Uh, Mr. Butler was here before, I think it was back in uh, 96, I believe it was, he was, he was there. I think, I'm not sure if he spent two to three years here at the time, but uh, he liked us so well in Virgil, he had, a, he had an opportunity to uh, come back and I think he really uh, volunteered to come back here. Now, Mr. Butler, of course, uh, knows the Virgil area and he knows the Virgil people. So he's uh, well familiar with, with the town. And, of course, I'm sure he's going to deal with you uh, fairly and justly. Uh, some concerns that, he, do, that he, he does have is there, there are a certain number of uh, people going around this town speeding. And I don't mean slightly over the speed limit, but speeding, you know, 60, 70 kilometers an hour. And 
that won't be tolerated. There's no doubt about that. And, of course, uh, we've mentioned before about the dog problem in town. There's not a big problem, but, you know, there are occasional dogs that uh, the owners are not uh, paying close attention to them, so uh, you should make sure you do that because, uh, you know, you'll be enforcing that law too. Noise pollution, there's a number of probably places in town that uh, seems to uh, want to make their music and that uh, so that everybody can hear it in town, especially their neighbors, and uh, that, you know, is, is not uh, not a good thing. And so uh, make sure you don't do stuff like that either. We've had a couple of uh, incidents in the Aaron's Arm area over the past uh, six months. <coughs> and when I'm talking about is that the two outboard motors have been stolen up there. Now, of course, uh, theft of anybody's property, you know, cannot be tolerated. Absolutely can't be tolerated. So if there's anyone that's seen these people in Aaron's arm, people, person or persons, taking these motors or know that these people have these motors, then you should inform the RCMP. You can do it anonymous. You don't have to identify yourself. Just simply lead the RCMP where these motors are. I know these people had these motors on these boats for safeguard, just in case that they went out, especially like the food fishery and that. Having these motors on was a safeguard in case their own motor, the principal motor that they had, gave out. I mean, you could be fooling with people's lives in this case. I mean, for a motor, if you want to buy parts, for goodness sake, go to a parts department, you know. Ask around if somebody got parts that you might be able to, they might give them to you. <clears throat> but to go in the hearing term and deliberately steal a motor, I mean, it's uh, you're putting yourself down to the, the lowest grade of human being to walk around, stealing from other people. It can't be tolerated. Absolutely can't be tolerated. Now those people who know of anybody who did this and won't tell on them, you know, you think you're getting away with something, you know, but perhaps the more they're going to steal from you, you know. And that's the way it happens, because when people successfully get away with a thief in one place, they generally do it somewhere else. So the quicker you, we can nip, stop this, the better for all concerned. So if you do have any, any idea who stole these motors, please inform the RCMP. We do not want to tolerate in this little town people going around stealing from other people. It's absolutely intolerable. Of course, uh, Council wish uh, Constable Butler a good stay in, in Virgil. The court case on our other water system, the court case is creeping the court. That's probably the best words for me to use. It's creeping the court. They've got some of the discoveries done, and they're in the process of trying to get others done. When will it get to court? Not even the lawyers can tell me this. So, it's grieving the court, and I can only keep you informed. The arena, uh, the tenders to to go to uh, public tender to go to public tender to put in the ecosystem, the eco ice system, will I think soon be called. It's gone to the municipal. Uh, service, government services for review. So hopefully they'll give the whole okay to call tenders on that uh, eagle system uh, in, in very short order. Of course, the other thing, you've heard us talk about the NMCA. 
National Marine Conservation Area that we started. It was started by uh, the former mayor, Mr. Alistair Han. Uh, I think probably about six years about six years ago now. Uh, that was that had been in the system with the federals and provincial governments uh, ever since that time. Again, crawling up through the system at a very slow pace. But we've been informed, we've been informed, we were informed at the convention uh, um, when we were in there the weekend that the provincial government uh, is now looking into this project and will soon write their recommendation for the federal government to look at. So I suppose it's getting closer to a yes or no, do we, uh, do we get this thing started? The application for the inside-outside worker for council, it, the closing date for that is October the 24th. So anyone that's interested, you know, if anyone, if you're interested or you, you have relatives who are interested, then make sure that they got their application in by October the 24th. Council, in doing their uh, maintenance this year and uh, and a little bit of improvements to the road. Uh, you probably noticed that they put in a, a culvert up by uh, by the uh, Jack Dex's area, up Messers there. Uh, there was some, a lot of water going over the road there during the winter time, especially uh, a lot of ice build up there. So they, they put in a culvert there to um, to try to prevent that. We also extended the road there around that term there on that turn there right by uh, just before you get to Mr. Dex's there. Now we, we, we extended that by uh, putting pavement on the gravel area where the cars normally go off of the road in order to make room for, uh, for other vehicles coming the other direction. It's a very narrow area. Now please, the road would extend it there on both sides with pavement for the purpose of giving more room for people traveling in both directions. It was not extended for the purpose of parking. So we don't want anyone to park in these areas. Just don't park on these extensions. It was not put there for that purpose. If you're parked there, we will ask the RCMP to take you because we put it there for the safety of pedestrians and the motor traffic there. So use that for the purpose that it was there for, please. We got our town manager uh, going to Stephenville on November the 20th for uh, training in the, in the public accounting. Uh, the government is changing the whole the total way of, of uh, keeping their books. And uh, so that means every town on this island have to learn a new system of how to uh, keep your books. And of course, in order to do that and do it properly, uh, our town manager has to be trained. Everyone has to be trained, even the, uh, even the charter accountants who are, who are doing our books. So he's going, he's going to Stephenville on November the 20th. Of course, I just want to remind you of the school zone. There's a, there's a certain area there by the far out and up by the B and B. Uh, that area has a reduced speed. So please try carefully and keep your speed down and in that area. You probably heard also uh, coming out of the convention, <clears throat> the minister, uh, uh, Mr. Denine, uh, he uh, he extended the life of the incinerators, and the date of closing for each incinerator will be dealt with on, on a on a case by case uh, point. Uh, you have to show that. Uh, you're making progress towards uh, eliminating, you know, getting an area where you're going to carry your uh, waste. We're coming, we come under the uh, West Coast uh, Waste Management 
So therefore, the, uh, the degree of which the West Coast has, uh, has got this uh, project developed it will govern the time limit that we will get on our incinerator. So I can't say it's open for another three months, six months, uh, no one knows. It depends on uh, when uh, the West Coast get their uh, recommendations put in place and um, it gets accepted by the government where, uh, what it is we're going to do with uh, the waste in Virgil and the surrounding area. So for now, the incinerator will not be closing on December 31st. But hopefully that the plan will be put into effect uh, you know, shortly in the new year, probably, or throughout the new year sometime, and, uh, and you'd be able to close that incinerator. We paid invoices to a total of $23,268. And I'd just like to probably mention that at this stage, I know some people probably are starting to run their water already, uh, probably got it on full blast. Uh, I just want to say there are places that have to run their water. We have acknowledged that, of course, uh, but please try to do it in, a, in the most conservative way that you can possibly do it. And it doesn't need to be run at this point in time. So delay it as long as possible run as little as possible, and of course, shut it down as soon as possible. The next council meeting is November the 26th. Thank you, and have a good, have a good week. This concludes our programming for tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night.